Good morning, kids. It's Karen Lee coming to you from my living room in South Berwick, Maine. It's hot. Um, I hope you're getting outside some and that you maybe have a little kiddie pool that you're playing in or that you're getting to the beach. My husband and I have been at the beach and it's just gorgeous. Oh. Okay, I have a couple books for you today. The first one is The Day You Begin. This is written by Jacqueline Woodson and um, she writes books for children and teenagers and this book is taken from her memoir her memoir is called brown girl dreaming and the memoir is a story of your own life so this book is is a slice taken from that book she's won newberries and coretta scott king awards she's a very good writer it's illustrated by Rafael Lopez, who's known for illustrating books celebrating diversity, so our differences as well as our likenesses. Okay, the day you begin. There will be times when you walk into a room and no one there is quite like you. Maybe it will be your skin or your clothes or the curl of your hair. There will be times when no one understands the way words curl from your mouth, the beautiful language, language of the country you left behind. My name is Rigoberto. We just moved here from Venezuela. And because they don't understand, the classroom will fill with laughter until the teacher quiets everyone. Rigoberto from Venezuela, your teacher says so soft and beautifully that your name and homeland sound like flowers blooming, the first bright notes of a song. There will be times when the words don't come. Your own voice, once huge, now smaller, when the teacher asks, what did you do last summer? Tell the class your story. We went to France, Shayla says. These shells came from a beach in Maine. A boy named Jonathan holds out a jar filled with tiny shells so fragile they look like they'll turn to dust in his own untraveled hands. My whole family went to India, Spain, South Carolina, each souvenir a small triumph of a journey. Their travels go on and on. And as you stand in front of that room, you can only remember how the heat waved as it lifted off the curb and your days spent at home caring for your little sister who made you laugh out loud and hugged you hard at nap time. 
You can only remember the books that you kept on reading long after she had fallen to sleep. And in that room, where no one else is quite like you, you'll look down at your own empty hands and wonder, what good is this when other students were flying and sailing and going somewhere? There will be times when the lunch your mother packed for you is too strange or too unfamiliar for others to love as you love it. There will be Excuse me, when even your own friend Nadia will wrinkle her nose and say, what's in there anyway? And you'll wonder how come she doesn't see the rice beneath the meat and the kimchi. You'll wonder why she doesn't remember that rice is the most popular food in the world. There will be times when the climbing bars are too high, the run is too fast and far, the game isn't one you ever really play. I don't want him on our team. You can watch. Maybe you can have a turn later. There will be times when the world feels like a place that you're standing all the way outside of. And all that stands beside you is your own brave self, steady as steel and ready even though you don't yet know what you're ready for. There will be times when you walk into a room and no one there is quite like you until the day you begin to share your stories. My name is Angelina and I spent my whole summer with my little sister, you tell the class, your voice stronger than it was a minute ago. Reading books and telling stories and even though we were right on our block, it was like we got to go everywhere. Books took them everywhere. This is the day you begin to find the places inside your laughter and your lunches, your books, your travel, and your stories, where every new friend has something a little like you and something else so fabulously not quite like you at all. This book, The Rainbow Fish, is written and illustrated by somebody named Marcus Pfister. He is a Swiss, so he's the first writer and illustrator that we're dealing with uh, from outside the United States. His books have been translated 
into over the over 60 languages so you can see he's a very popular writer all right the rainbow fish a long way out in the deep blue sea there lived a fish not just an ordinary fish but the most beautiful fish on the entire ocean his scales were every shade of blue and green and purple with sparkling silver scales among them. The other fish were amazed at his beauty. They called him Rainbow Fish. Come on, Rainbow Fish, they would call. Come and play with us. The rainbow fish would just glide past, proud and silent, letting his scales shimmer. One day, a little blue fish followed after him. Rainbow fish, he called. Wait for me. Please give me one of your shiny scales. They are so wonderful, and you have so many. You want me to give you one of my special scales? Who do you think you are? cried the rainbow fish. Get away from me. Shocked, the little blue fish swam away. He was so upset, he told all his friends what had happened. From then on, no one would have anything to do with the rainbow fish. They turned away when he swam by. So he's losing all his friends. What good were the dazzling, shimmering scales with no one to admire them? Now he was the loneliest fish in the entire ocean. One day he poured out his troubles to the starfish. I really am beautiful. Why doesn't anybody like me? I can't answer that for you, said the starfish. But if you go beyond the coral reef to a deep cave, you will find the wise octopus. Maybe she can help you. The rainbow fish found the cave. It was very dark inside and he couldn't see anything. Then suddenly two eyes caught him in their glare and the octopus emerged from the darkness. I have been waiting for you, said the octopus with a deep voice. The waves have told me your story. This is my advice. Give a glittering scale to each of the other fish. You will no longer be the most beautiful fish in the sea, but you will discover how to be happy. rainbow fish started to say but the octopus octopus had already disappeared into a dark cloud of ink give away my scales my beautiful shining scales never how could I ever be happy without them
Suddenly he felt the light touch of a fin. The little blue fish was back. Rainbow fish, please don't be angry. I just want one little scale. The rainbow fish wavered. Only one very, very small shimmery scale, he thought. Well, maybe I wouldn't miss just one. Carefully, the rainbow fish pulled out the smallest scale and gave it to the little fish. Thank you. Thank you very much, the little blue fish bubbled playfully, and he tucked the shiny scale in among his blue ones. A rather peculiar feeling came over the rainbow fish. For a long time, he watched the little blue fish swim back and forth with his new scale glittering in the water. The little blue fish whizzed through the ocean with his scale flashing, so it didn't take long before the rainbow fish was surrounded by the other fish. Everyone wanted a glittering scale. The rainbow fish shared his scales left and right, and the more he gave away, the more delighted he became. When the water around him filled with glimmering scales, he at last felt at home among the other fish. Finally, the rainbow fish had only one shiny scale left. His most prized possessions had been given away, yet he was very happy. Come on, rainbow fish, they called. Come and play with us. Here I come, said rainbow fish, and happy as a splash, he swam off to join his friends. He's got just one shining scale left. Okay. All right, it was good to be with you today, and I'll see you next time.